I want to talk a little bit about deep time, the grand stretch of time that goes all the way back to the origins of the universe, and that sort of informs my thinking. I'm also interested in the far future, what's going to happen with humanity and civilization over the, the span of centuries and millennia and, and millions of years into the future. Because that framework, that temporal expanse, kind of frames the way I think about a lot of contemporary issues, like not just what is happening this year or before the next presidential election or whatever, but what happened in the distant past to make us who we are today as humans. So ever since I was a kid, I've been fascinated by prehistory. I love going to zoos, natural history museums, reading about dinosaurs, um, even designing alternative creatures that could have existed in the past or the future. And once I got to graduate school at Stanford and I started studying evolutionary psychology, I realized that's not just a sort of fun interest that kids can have. That's also a passion that can inform the way we understand human nature now. So it really helps to be able to think about, well, life first evolved three to four billion years ago. Sexual reproduction evolved about 1.2 billion years ago. The Cambrian explosion 530 million years ago created multicellular life and nervous systems and behavior and sexual selection. And then you get the rise of social primates 50 million years ago, living in groups, interacting, um, requiring complicated social and communication abilities. And then the rise of you know, our lineage, 4 million years ago to 100,000 years ago. All of that stuff is relevant to understanding who we are today, how we respond to things and to each other, and that's informed the entirety of my professional life. But also as a kid, I grew up reading a lot of science fiction. Science fiction authors were my heroes. Their imagination I thought was dazzling, and the idea that you could have compelling narratives about things that could happen in the future, given new technologies or new social arrangements, I found very inspiring to kind of contextualize what's going on in the present moment. And that's continued. You know, I've been fascinated by the science fiction novels of Ian M. Banks, his culture novels particularly, and all the new work that's unfolded over the last 30 or 40 years in um, science fiction and, and contemporary fiction, which also often addresses new developments in technology and society. So this is just a really short way of framing what I'm aiming to do in, in my channel, is to think about stuff that's happening now from the perspective of how did we get here evolutionarily in terms of genetics and ancestry, and where are we realistically and optimistically going to go in the future over the next decades and centuries.